Welcome to this keyword breakdown video. The purpose of this series of videos is for you to understand the terminology of sports science. It is like a language. It is like doing a language exam. So if you understand what the words mean in the world of biology, where the origins come from, whether it's Latin, Greek, wherever it's come from, it doesn't matter. But as long as you understand the origin of the word, you understand the word better, and you're not faced with these 10, 11, 12 letter words feeling overwhelmed as to what they mean, when actually the structure of the word is quite simple. And once you learn that and break it down, it makes it a lot easier for you to learn. So we're gonna start with prefixes. What we mean by a prefix is the start of a word. So our first one is append. And this is in the appendicular skeleton. Append is simply to attach and to support. So the appendicular skeleton is the part of your skeleton that attaches to the central part of your skeleton. So pretty much your limbs and your clavicle and your scapula, etc. And your axial skeleton is the central part of your skeleton. So append, that long word appendicular, simply built from the fact that append means to attach or support and that's the prefix of the word. Diaphysis. Now diaphysis, look at dia, just like diameter, it passes through. So the diameter passes through the circle. The diaphysis is the bit that passes through the bone, it's the middle aspect of the bone, the middle part of the bone. And that's what we mean by diaphysis, dia, that's what that means. And when you compare it with epiphysis and metaphysis, that is the main difference. The start of the word, these prefixes. Distal, nice and simple, dist, distance, further away. So if you're looking at a distal aspect of a bone or distal aspect of the skeleton, it's the furthest part away from the joint. So if you're looking at the distal part of your arm, it's your phalanges. If you're looking at the most distal part of your lower limbs, again, it's your phalanges. If you're looking at comparing if a bone is more distal than another bone, the radius is more distal from the shoulder than the humerus. And again, it's just because of distance, dist, exactly the same thing. Epiphysis. So we've already discussed diaphysis, which is the middle. Epiphysis. Let's look at epi, that's the different prefix here. And epi is the most outer part of the bone. So it's the head of the bone. Everything within the epiphysis, we're looking at the head of the bone. Okay, so epi is the outermost. Easy to get epi mixed up with epicenter, but that's different. The epicenter is, is a completely different thing to the epiphysis. Same with epimysium, when you're learning the muscular system, it means the outermost. We also have meta. Now, meta is at the start of three words within the skeletal system. We have metacarpals, metatarsals, and metaphysis. And it literally means after or beside. So the metacarpals are beside the carpals, the metatarsals are beside the tarsals, and the metaphysis is beside the epiphysis, which is the end part. Just inside from the end. Endosteum. Endo is the prefix. It means within, inner, or absorbing. So the endosteum is the inner aspect of the bone, because osteum, osteo as a suffix, is an end of a word, just means bone. So it's the inner aspect of the bone. That's all the endosteum is referring to. And it is the inner layer of the casing of the bone. So obviously the bone is hollow and these things inside the bone, but the actual bone itself, the endosteum is the inner layer of that. And then obviously you have the cavity inside the endosteum. Next we have the periosteum. So again, surrounding, enclosing is the peri aspect. Osteum is the bone, so it's the surrounding, enclosing aspect of the bone. Next we have proximal. Prox means close or near, just like proximity. So again, if you're talking about anatomical terminology and you're asked to describe a proximal bone in relation to a joint, it's the complete opposite of distal. Proximal is the one that is closest to the joint. So again, we've spoke about the shoulder quite a bit with distal. We'll do the same with proximal. The humerus is more proximal to the shoulder than the radius. The most proximal bone to the hip is the femur. It's the closest proximity to where the joint is itself. Next, we're gonna look at some key words. So not the prefix at the start or the suffix at the end, just the key word itself. But when you see it, you might think, well, what does that mean? But if you understand the word and the basis of the word, 
you'll understand a lot more within the skeletal system. Firstly is axial. Now we have the appendicular skeleton we've spoke about already. We also have the axial skeleton, which is the central aspect of your skeleton, highlighted in white in the diagram. It's the middle part, the axis, the central point, what things rotate around. That's what we're referring to with axial skeleton. Next we have the word articulate. And we also have articular cartilage, articular capsule. And all the word articulate means is simply where, the, where bones meet, where they join together. So to define a joint, it's where two or more bones articulate, where two or more bones meet. Articular cartilage is cartilage at the end of the bone to prevent rubbing with another bone. Again, it's at the end, it's where they meet. So every time you see articulate or articular, it's referring to the ends of the bones. Next we have cavity, it means a hole. You go to the dentist, they say you've got a cavity, it means you've got a hole in your tooth. Well a cavity is the same thing, it's a hole. We've got the thoracic cavity, the hole within your ribs. The joint cavity, the hole within your joint. And obviously within these cavities, things exist. We also have a marrow cavity, chop, the marrow is inside it. But the hole itself, the cavity, and then obviously there's things that are within that hole or within that space. Next is cartilaginous. I've included this one because it's just a really long word that sounds daunting and you think, what does this mean? But when you see cartilaginous, all I want you to think about is the fact that cartilaginous tissue is protective. And the vertebrae is an example of a cartilaginous joint. And if you think about the vertebrae's main focus, it's protecting all of your nerves everything from your central nervous system your vertebrae is protecting the link from your brain to the rest of your body so it's really really important that we know the cartilaginous joint is the vertebrae and its purpose next we have synovial a word that is massively important within the skeletal system We've got synovial joints synovial fluid synovial membrane synovial capsule and whenever you see the word synovial, what it's referring to is the fact that it's a joint that secretes a fluid from a membrane. That's what we're talking about because the freely movable joints, therefore we need that lubrication. Your cranium as a fixed joint or a fibrous joint, it's not releasing synovial fluid to lubricate your cranium plates as they glide over each other because they don't. It's fixed and it's fused. There's no movement in your cranium. But your synovial joints are very different. And there's lots of movement at the freely movable joints and they need fluid to move freely. Otherwise, arthritis is around the corner. So synovial is just simply referring to the joints that have lubricant. Next, I wanna look at two words that are really key and I'll do the same with the CV system and the same with the muscular system and the same with the respiratory system. The difference between the words structure and function. Now, when you see the word structure, it's how it's made up. So look at these blue dots, how they're made up to create the image and how they're linked together. So a structure within the skeletal system is the way the ligaments are made of the fibers they're made of, the structure that it's made of, it's a nice, tough, connective tissue, etc. The difference between the structure and the function is the function of, let's say, a ligament that we're going with, is now, look at the blue dot now, underneath it has three points. So the, the function of a ligament is to connect bone to bone. The function of the ligament is to be, provide a structure so we can have shape and support. They're the functions of it. The structure is its physical design. The function is how it works, its roles. So think about a pen. Think about a pen. Structure is the plastic outer coating. It's got the ink inside in the plastic. It's got a nib at the end. The function is to write on paper. And that's the difference between structure and function. Lastly, we've got a few suffixes, how the words end, not how the word starts or the, the whole word. So osteum is at the end of a number of words in the skeletal system. And whenever you hear anything like that, osteo simply just means bone. So then if you remember what the prefix means, whether it's peri, whether it's endo, whatever it may be at the start of the bone, at the start of the word, learn that because together it just means bone and the different part of the bone. That's literally it. It's a difficult word and when you break it down, it's not so difficult. Next, again, a word we're gonna look at a lot within the energy systems, cis. When cis is at the end of a word in biology, it just means a state or a condition. 
Okay, so again, diaphysis, epiphysis, metaphysis. However, when you look at physis as the end of a word, it means a sense of growth. So again, diaphysis, epiphysis, metaphysis, it's referring to the bone and the location within that bone. Simple as that. I hope this video has been helpful, trying to break down these words for your understanding, particularly if you're learning this subject with English as a second language, as many of you are around the world. Break down the key words, learn their origin, and it makes sense so much more when you come to revise for your exams. Good luck. See you again soon.